the word Akash is a quote from Hindi or Sanskrit and means the sky. And the records that are kept up in the sky are called the Akashic records. You like to call it Akashic, I don't mind. So long as we don't, we both, we all work in the same place, up in the sky. Now, I don't know if the sky is it. apparently not this sky. I don't think any records are there. So we have to see what is the sky in which such records can be kept. So the first thing is to discover the sky, the Akash, the great space above where the records are kept. That space can't be the limited small sky that we see above us when we look upward. This is so small, it's just only infinite. It has to be bigger than infinity to hold record. Now, what can be bigger than infinity? The sky where these records are kept, which are called the Akashic records, has to be bigger than the infinite sky in order to hold these records. Now, therefore, the simple problem before me now is to find something that is bigger than infinity, which means I might start by saying, how big is infinity? When we say, this space is infinite, or this time has no beginning, it is infinite, what does it mean? It means we can place as much in this as we like. If I say, this world began long ago, way back, a million years, a billion years, a trillion years, when I reach a trillion years, I have made my infinity into trillion years. If I say, this world is only a million years, I have made my time infinity into a million years. If I say, this sky, this space above, is very high, it goes to a billion light years, then I have made my infinity into a billion light years. And if I say, no, it's very high, it goes to ten billion light years, then I have made it to ten billion. That means the infinity that we experience now in time and space is as big as we make it. And no bigger. Please remember that. The infinity we experience here is as big as we make it and no bigger. Therefore, if something is bigger than what we make, that must be the sky where Akashic records can be held. Which is that place? <laughs> Which is bigger than what we can make. We can make any size in a time and space that we create. If we create this sky and this time and this space, then we can, we cannot keep a Akashic record there. If any sky exists which is not made by us, but makes us, then that could hold the Akashic record. What happens if we close our eyes and look at the space with it? Let's see how much is the space inside us when we close our eyes. This space seems to grow automatically. It starts with a very small area in the head. And as we stay on there, we can see further and further, it seems to expand by itself. Ultimately, you can take the whole of this universe into this space and it expands. There is no end. Just by closing one's eyes, one can get into a space which expands and never ends, and it's not this finite space. This space outside has limited number of things. But the space we create when we close our eyes seems to go beyond that. And if you were to look at yourself closing your eyes inside, that means if you, after closing your physical eyes, start roaming around in that space inside, behind the eyes, look around and get startled by the large place inside the head and start moving about and say, what's all this going on? There's a forehead in front and you are walking behind it imaginatively. I know it is imaginative. I'm suggesting if you try to imagine you are behind the forehead, behind the eyes, moving about in the hollow space of the head and you run towards the ear lobe of the right ear or to the ear lobe of the left ear and you run, you can run as far as you like without reaching it. So much more space opens up. Or you can touch it if you want to reach quickly. Therefore, 
there is a great flexibility of time and space inside our head. And if the one that runs towards the ears, if you close those eyes, the eyes that you have made imaginatively with which you are seeing inside the head, if you close those eyes and then see, you see the Akash in which the records are kept. Because that is completely unlimited. It's bigger than infinity. It creates infinity. That sky creates infinity. Therefore, we have a sky that we can see with these eyes on the physical body. We have a sky that we can see with the imaginative body that we create behind the eyes. And we have a sky that we see with the causal body which is lying within the imaginative body. When we look at the sky with our causal eyes, the eyes that belong to the body within our imaginative body, we can see the sky in which the Akashic records are held. What are these Akashic records? These are the records of the past, present and future. They contain everything about everybody for all times, in all planets, in all spaces, in all creation. But they contain everything about the past, present and future. Which means, to exist, they require time. If there was no time, they would not exist. Therefore, <clears throat> they create time. They are the records which can be kept in a timeless moment and experienced in time. How do we do that? We start from a now. Those records are held in now. Now has no time. Now has absolutely no time. Not even a second. Not even a fraction of a second. Not even a fraction of a billionth part of a second. Not even a fraction of a billionth part of a billionth part of a second. It just has no time. Before now, the future is there with, not with us. After now, the past is there which is not with us. What is with us for experience is only now which has no time. But we can have no experience. No records can be kept of now. A record has to be of time, of past, present and future. Now has no time. So there can be no record of now. But in now, you can keep records of past, present and future. There is only one everlasting unending, more than infinite, now, that exists in that sky in which all records are kept. Records are not placed in stacks in time and space. The records are held in a timeless now, at a spaceless here. There is only a timeless now and a spaceless here where the entire records are kept. But when we want to read them and see what's written there, we stretch them out from the now into the past and the future. And we say, this must have happened in the past. This must be coming up in the future. We begin to see our past life by stretching the same records from the now. And we look into the future by stretching the same now, the same records in the now towards the future. The future and the past we create ourselves. We create because we want to have experience with bodies. We can't have an experience as we know it except with a body. This physical body is perhaps the best. Out of all the bodies we have, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, causal, astral, out of all the bodies that we possess, the best body is the physical body. When we are in this physical body, we have a unique experience which we do not have in any other body. And what is that experience? The experience of free will. That we can decide what to do. We can't actually decide, but we feel. It looks like we can decide. Even this experience which looks like we can decide, though we can't decide, even this apparent free will is only in this physical body. In no other body. People talk of going high up to an astral body, causal body, and all the higher bodies, and flying around with that. It will be terribly boring to keep on flying around, having nothing to do, all programmed. If you fly around the universes on a programmed basis, a computerized machine takes you wherever it likes, what do you get out of it? Here at least you have conflict, 
should I or should I not? And it's different. There is no option available to us in any other body except the human body. The only other being in the whole of creation who has this option is God himself, totality, sitting up with total consciousness. There is no other being, no other form of power which has that option what to do. This or that, either God himself or the human body, only two bodies. And God is not a body. Therefore, the only body, the only form worn by us externally as consciousness, where we can have this great experience of deciding what to do with the physical body. But the bodies, which I talked of, the imaginative body, I said if you close your eyes and go behind the eyes, you can run around. With what do you run around? That body is called the astral body. Doesn't sound so interesting. Other people who write nice books on astral projections, they make it sound more interesting than I do. I seem to simplify this. That your imagination is your astral body. Indeed it is. It looks imagination and looks like the imaginative body because you are still wearing this one. If you became unconscious of the physical body, that very imagined body is the astral body. There is no other astral body. When you will see your own form, after becoming unconscious of the physical body, that is the astral body. All the qualities of the astral body are there. What are those qualities? The ability to perceive with senses without having a physical body. That is the quality of the astral body. It can see, hear, touch, taste, smell, move out without the use of the physical body. Surely that you can even now imagine. You imagine you have just walked out and you have walked in. Who has done it? Some body of yours just walks out the same body. Since you are wearing this physical body and holding your major part of the attention here, when you do this, therefore it looks very thin and subtle. When you take your entire intense attention into that imagined body, it takes up all the qualities of the natural body. And when I said to you, that let the eyes of the astral body close and within that you will see another body. Those eyes, that is called the causal body. That's no body actually. But we call it causal body because it behaves like a body. But what is it actually? It is the mind. The human mind itself is the causal body. When the mind functions, that means it can perceive without having to use sense perception, we call it the causal body. It is in the causal body at the causal stage that all things are caused and therefore the Akashic records Then we say, where are the Akashic records kept? They are kept at the mental stage, stage of the universal mind which can be seen by the causal body. Or your mind freed from these encumbrances of these physical and mental bodies. This physical body is not a good one to use for seeing Akashic records. It's only good for making up your mind what to do. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Let me tell you the advantage of doing that. The greatest joy one can get in this creation is to seek, to love, and to find. You can't do that if you don't have the ego. If you don't have the experience, even a false experience, an illusion of an experience, if you don't have that experience that you can seek, you can't be a seeker. If you are not a seeker, you can't be lo a lover or be loved. If you can't be a lover or can't be loved, you have missed out God. Therefore, it is only in the physical body that we can be a seeker, in no other body. In all other bodies you can have great experiences, grand experiences, but you cannot become a seeker. Therefore, this great experience is so great that souls and spirits which have gone on to those higher bodies for living forever. In the causal body you can live forever. They have prayed to the Lord to give us the opportunity to come down to the physical plane so they can become seekers and go higher up to God. In the Hindu pantheon of gods and goddesses, there are stories that the gods themselves have asked, please give us a chance to get down to the physical body. So we can seek and become one with the ultimate Lord. So much is the importance of the physical body. 
The physical body is very important for becoming a seeker and for seeking the total God, but is not a good medium for seeing the Akashic record. If you want to see the Akashic records, which any one of you can see, it's not that it's confined to some people, that some people have the special power to see. Every one of us has equal power to see the Akashic records <coughs> and the causal region of the mental plane of your mind, universal mind, where we are recorded. Then we don't need this body. We need the causal body to see the Akashic records. How do we get it? Either you throw away these two bodies, kill them, or you become unaware of these bodies. You can't kill them because you never come back to tell anybody you saw the Akashic record. <laughs> <laughs> Many people are busy reading there, we don't even know. Good fun would be if you see them and came back and told your friends and folks back home. We saw, they are there, and we know what they mean. They have seen our past, present, and future. That is only possible if you don't kill this body, don't die. But have the experience of dying while living. Keep living in this body, but still have the experience as if you have left the body. But take this body as if you have died without dying. How do we do? We have a very interesting and beautiful ability in us, all of us. And that ability is called attention. We have the power to place our attention on anything we like. If I draw your attention to these lovely flowers, you look at the flowers and other things don't seem to matter and your whole attention comes on the flowers. When I say move the flowers to the light there, then your attention moves to the light. When I say take it to the painting, it goes there. And if I say close your eyes and keep your attention on the painting, you can still keep it without seeing. So that your eyes are not what is moving, attention is moving. This screen, this beam of attention that moves like a torchlight, this is the wonderful faculty we have of using attention. This is the faculty that helps us to reach the Akashic record. This is the faculty that helps us to die while living. This is the faculty that helps us to go back to our highest home of absolute consciousness or God. This is the most remarkable faculty human beings have got. Nothing is equal to this. The ability to use our attention is the main ability which helps us to get any spiritual proof we want. How do we operate? If you look how we are using our attention today, how are we using it? We are scattering it. It is all scattered. It is scattered over the body. It is scattered in the world we have created in the body. It is scattered so much in the body that we think this body is fast. We give it our name. Knowing that we are not the body, we are using the body, we still call ourselves this body. Because of the scattering and low percolation of this attention throughout this physical body. So much so that if I had my daughter with me and I had to describe, I said, that's my daughter. Not a correct statement. I should have said that my body's daughter, which indeed it is. But we identify ourselves so much with body. We don't seem to realize that all relationships, all underlined, all our relationships at the physical level are relationships with the physical body, not with us. If we are using the physical body, the relationships are not our relationships. They are relationships of the physical body which we are using. And by using the physical body for these relationships, we scatter our attention to the body into all these relationships. The people we meet, and talk to, to make friends, have other relationships, they draw our attention. And we keep on scattering our attention all over. If you want to find out where you have scattered your attention, very easy. Try and meditate. Close your eyes and meditate. All those where you have drawn your attention come and pull you out. Your thoughts take you back to where you scattered your attention. Therefore, when you find that your own attention, the flow of attention, the stream of attention is scattered all over, you must get it back to yourself in order to get out of the physical system, including the physical body. If you withdraw your attention, not place your attention, not focus your attention, 
we have been focusing too long. Some people misunderstand meditation to mean to focus attention on something. True meditation never means focusing of attention anywhere. We have been focusing attention too long. Wherever we focus attention, that's where we go and get attached. If we don't want to attach ourselves to the physical system and don't want to be aware of the physical system, including our physical body, we have got to focus our attention but withdraw our attention from where we were focusing it. If we withdraw our attention, we will become unaware of the system. Withdraw where? It's easy to say, don't focus but withdraw. Withdraw where? Withdraw to the point from where you are sending it out. Merely withdraw to yourself. So again, close your eyes and feel where you are. Experience where you are. Imagine where you are. Contemplate where you are. Wherever you feel, imagine or contemplate, withdraw your attention there. To yourself. When you withdraw your attention to yourself as imagined, in a location as imagined, you are no longer scattering your attention. And the more you stay there, and more you can cut off the attachments which through thought seem to take you out, you will become more and more unaware of the physical body. And as your attention is withdrawn from the experiences and attachments outside, it will gradually also be withdrawn from the physical body. Ultimately, you will be aware of a strong, conscious, wakeful self without being aware of the body. That is how we die by living. This body is dead for us. The attention has been withdrawn in the same way as the life force will be withdrawn when we actually die. Therefore, we have created a condition in which we are experiencing death while living. And when we do that, we get on to our own self. And then we discover that we have our own astral form. A body that we can use at will, that is not encumbered by having to see only through these eyes, having to hear only limited sounds which these eardrums can hear, having only to see what is before these physical eyes, it can see either direction, even behind. It is not limited to having to walk with these heavy feet and legs, it can fly through. It is not bound by these walls which can't let this body pass through, it can pass through. It can do sort of things. It becomes free. This was not a body which was helping us to get these perceptions. Then we discover we were in a prison. This physical body was imprisoning us. We were imprisoned in a physical body and we find we are free. And we can see the same world. Free. Go anywhere we like. So easily, so lightly. That is our self. Not yet our self. That's our astral body. But when you withdraw attention from the astral body, from the sense perceptions, again to yourself as located and contemplated by yourself, wherever you think you are in that astral body, if you withdraw your attention there, you will become unaware of your sense perceptions and still fully aware of yourself. The mental self, all the thought streams will become so powerful, your thoughts will become real. You are still yourself, only you are becoming unaware of the astral body, or the body of sense perception. When that happens, you discover that you are never senses, that you are in reality pure mind, a unit of the universal mind. When you open the eyes of your own universal mind as individuated into you, you look around and you find records. You see the beginning, the middle and the end of time. Time created so that we could have experiences of the records held in the center of now. How are these records created? These records we have created. Nobody has created and placed them for us. We created and we keep on creating. Even now we are created. After all, where are these records? They are on our own minds. And where have we gone into that sky? Nowhere except into our own mind. By having this experience of dying while living, being unaware of this physical body and unaware of the astral body, we haven't gone anywhere. We are still with our own mind. Therefore, the Akashic records are written down in our own mind. Therefore, they are mental. They are the impressions which the mind carries so that we can create lives after life. We can create experience of a lifetime. These Akashic records 
are the records which hold the destiny and experience of all people. It is only in an illusion that we create the past, the present and the future. Why do we create that illusion? Because that is the only way we can enjoy those timeless experiences. Otherwise we don't enjoy, it doesn't look real. By stretching them out into past, present and future, we enjoy them. They are held in permanent storage there and we enjoy them by creating a time flow of time at the physical and astral levels. At physical level, time flows in a subjective way. It looks like something is going to come tomorrow, it has come today and has passed away yesterday. It looks like that. It's not actually happening like that. Why does it look like that? Because we have made it to look like that. Otherwise, examine what is past, present and future. Examine without bias. Examine objectively that in physical level, where we are not talking to each other, what is the meaning of these words, past, present and future? We are talking of events. Experience held in Akashic records has become events here. Events means it takes time and space. Let us examine any event. There is no event which does not have a duration. An event can take one second, ten seconds, one minute, one hour, ten hours, ten years, hundred years. But an event requires time. Where can we experience events? Not in the present, because present has no time. You can't place an event in the present. When I say, I have just spoken to you in the present, this is a loose way, an incorrect way, an inappropriate way of saying, I have just talked to you in the immediate past. Every word I speak, I speak in the immediate past. Before I speak it in the future, when I speak it in the immediate past, I can't speak to you in the present. Present has no time. Therefore, I am speaking to you in the immediate past. That is past. What has already gone by and we remember it is already past. So past is past, present is past. Let's see what is future. Future is a function of human consciousness when it hopes, fears, or anticipates. Supposing we lost these functions in our mind. Supposing human beings can no longer hope, can no longer fear, can no longer anticipate the word future will be written off from all the dictionaries of the world. Future does not exist as such. It is our hopes, our fears, our anticipations that make the future. We create a future. If we stop doing these things, there will be no concept of a future left. Therefore, hoping, fearing and anticipating is a function that is performed in the so-called present and takes time. You can't have the smallest hope without time. You can't have the smallest fear without time, not the smallest anticipation without time. Therefore, they are in the immediate past. Therefore, the future that we speak of is also in the past. We are creating it in the past. Therefore, past is past, present is past, future is past. The truth is that in the kind of time we are passing through, there is no time for anything to happen except the past. Now the strange thing about this is, the strangest thing is that the past cannot be experienced except through memory. That's the pity of it. You can't go back into the past and experience it in the physical sense, in the physical world. In this world, we have no means of going walking back into the past except through memory. By remembering. Recall. Then would you believe it? That I am making a true statement to you today that all the experience you are having now, all, without exception, all underlined, of past, present and future is all nothing but remembering. From memory. Human beings are incapable of any other conscious experience in the physical state except to remember. And you can't remember something that hasn't happened. Where did it happen? It happened in the Akashic record. This is a strange way and we call it creation. It looks funny but very simple. That in a timeless now, you hold all the events together, packed into now, into timelessness. You bring it into the illusion of time, pack them into a past and through memory create a past, present and future. That's what we are doing right now. This is the reality of our so-called material world where we are making so many plans. How do we make plans? They're all made. When we think 
Now what shall I do? Should I believe in the Kashik records or not? Even this thought, should I believe in the Kashik records or not, is in the Kashik records. That people will question this and give it the death and reality of a real free will is also part of the Kashik records. But there are records which we create here. And there are records we create on the astral level. And then finally there are Akashic records. We can make some plans here. Like I can plan that tomorrow I am going to Rochester, Minnesota. That means I have written it here. And I will be reminded by Professor Pat Mueller, you already been there. So tomorrow I may cancel it. <laughs> but when I made the plan, I thought I made the plan at the physical level. It is a plan which we think we have made. We have created a future of a plan. But in the astral level, it is recorded that I will make the plan and cancel it, written beforehand. Then we might say that the future and destiny is written. It's very bad destiny. We want some help. So some good God man comes and says, come on, the destiny was very bad, but I give you my special blessings. And this load of karma will become very light. You say, fine, he has changed our destiny. Destiny was written at the astral plane. But even this intervention, that there will be a destiny to be gone through, it will be changed, is written in the Akashic records. The Akashic records contain several layers of previous predetermined events. Everything that happens to us is 100% totally predetermined. But looks like it is happening because of us. There is a secret for that. Why does the history of man, the events of man, man's total life, the human life, which is already completely pre-recorded, predetermined. Why does it look like we are making it and we can make it? What is the secret for this feeling that we are making our own destiny and making our own life? The secret is that the me we talk of, that conscious self, which seems to be functioning and making these decisions, which seems to have become a small little individual, in a small little body, in a big wide universe, this consciousness that has assumed the role of one individual is in fact that same total God or universal God which has in any case to make, made all the decisions. Because it is one in reality, therefore we get the feeling we make our own destiny. It is in our totality we make our destiny. In fact, the human individual in his own total self makes the destiny. In his individual self experiences the destiny. Free will in our level, as individuals, is arising out of ignorance. We do not know how we are doing it. Free will in our total self, as God, is real because it is made out of knowledge. We know what is the plan. And this free will is not separate. The illusory free will out of ignorance of a human being is part of the total free will of God in knowledge. That is why, so long as God operates from within us, total consciousness operates from within us, we get this uncanny feeling we are doing everything after all. We are in our total self. That is the secret. This secret leads to the path to God-realization. This secret tells us which way to go and which is that way within. Nobody has said that you can get any reality anywhere outside. You can only get within. Why? Because the totality of our own self lies within. And therefore, this feeling that we are the makers of our own destiny. So in our own total awareness, we made the destiny. In our individuated awareness, enclosed with these bodies, we are going through the same destiny. And feeling we are now making it. Creating the past, present and future to show we are now making something. Everything is predetermined and recorded in the Akashic records. We can make no change whatsoever sitting here. Everything is predetermined then why bother about it? Some friend of mine came and he said, if everything is predetermined, I'll sit at home and not bother about doing anything. I don't want to go to my job. I don't want to do any work. It's all pre-recorded. I said, it's pretty bad that it's pre-recorded in your case that you're not going to do a job and suffer for it. In my case, it's recorded. I'll do a lot of work and get a lot of benefits here. So I'm going to go ahead. And if you do what I am doing, it's pre-recorded like that in your case also. Then he started working. When you decide not to work, it's as bad as deciding to work. 
there's no difference you can't say that active movement active dynamic position that you take is using your free will and to withdraw from that is not using your free will both are free will to decide to do a thing or decide not to do a thing both are the same free will therefore if both are the same why not do and get the best out of this world and the best of the other world therefore when you feel like doing it you must do it that's what is being recorded when you feel like getting the best out of this world get the best out of this world that is being recorded the free recorded does not mean that these choices are not free recorded even these feelings whether you should work or not work is free recorded so the easiest way to have access to the akashic records is by vacating the body through process of meditation in which you withdraw your attention and go to the higher level of conscious causal self there you can see everything is recorded in the capsule of timeless time it is because of this time factor that we are subject to the illusion of karma i call it illusion of karma too many people are bothered by the reality of karma let me tell you there is no reality of karma karma is as real as mind if mind is not real karma is not mind uh, karma is not real karma is a mental state there is no karma at the physical level there is no karma at the astral level there is no karma at the spiritual level karma is only at the mental level karma is what creates the akashic records karma is what makes the mental impressions karma is what creates one lifetime after another all these illusions disappear when the illusion of the mind disappears therefore perfect masters and we call them perfect because they have gone above the mind perfect living masters have had one great quality that they had personally transcended the mental levels therefore they could speak up and say there is no real karma it's illusion when there is no real karma there is no real free will there is no real evil good and evil there can't be if there was real choice to us then there would be real karma if there was real choice before us there would be real reward and punishment if we can do a thing everything is already recorded how can we be punished and rewarded for it the punishment and reward system of karma arises from the illusion of free will and the illusion of free will arises from the mind therefore the entire package of illusions grand illusion these are all called the grand illusions the grand illusion that time exists and we are moving from uh, yesterday's to today's to tomorrow's and the grand illusion that we have to take our own decisions the grand illusion that we are going to be punished and rewarded the grand illusion that there is an absolute good and evil all these grand illusions disappear when we transcend the mind therefore do not think that the akashic records are the end of the story they are only the middle of the story the end of the story is that you can transcend the records and find out the illusion of these records as well as of life as well as of time mind karma etc but very few very very rare people in this universe know about this truth above the akashic records very few when they speak we can't understand them because we are used to karma so we can't understand that even karma is an illusion but they tell us you have the ability to transcend your own mind you have the ability to transcend the universal mind where all records are kept you will find that the universal mind was only an illusion illusory thing added on to yourself when you transcend that you reach the region of pure spirit pure yourself there no time exists is not necessary you can reside in the now forever and that residence in the now forever without any mind without any time without senses and body is called the residence of the spirit in its father form we become pure souls as spirits only at that stage in fact we find ourselves only at that stage then socrates said no thyself he meant that self nothing short of that before that we are not ourselves and when we are ourselves we find all the problems we created in this world were not of ours they were not our problems they were problems created by these mediums of bodies and senses and minds that we were using by using these mediums we thought the problems were ours 
the moment we became ourselves and not our mediums, we find we were free from problems. Any problem. We had no problem of karma. We had no problem of good and evil. We had no problem of past and present. We had no problem of guilt and innocence and ignorance and conscience. We didn't have any problems. We created these problems by stepping into the mental realm. One discovers the purity, the beauty of one's own self. What is the experience of that self? How does it experience when there is no time, no world? It still retains three fundamental experiences which belong to our soul, and not to our mind, not to our bodies. Those three experiences are, first, the experience of love, experience of complete identification with someone, the experience of real oneness. That experience of love is not the experience of attachment of this world. It is certainly not the experience of the love which we use when we say, I love you, I love you. This is attachment. When a person says, I love you, mark how that person says, I love you. Mark carefully and you will find that person loves I more than you. It's an ego trip. Don't respond with love. If it is real love, you see what happens. If I, a person says, I love you, you don't respond. Respond negatively. In a minute, the person will say, I hate you. <laughs> Is that love? Can it be love? Is there any I left in the love? No, this is attachment. Where both I and you exist, it is attachment. If I is still there, and you can remember your I, know your I, be aware of your I, you can't be in love. If you are in love, only you remains. I disappears. The identification with the object of love is so great, so full. The awareness of the object of love of the beloved so much occupies your total consciousness. You are not aware of I anymore. Indeed, you are not even aware of love anymore. Then you are in love. <laughs> you are filled up with the one whom you love. You don't remember love or I. That is love. And that love stays when you are pure spirit, pure soul. What has broken up that love, not allowed us to experience it, is mind, thinking. Thinking has destroyed our experience of love more than anything else. When we have had that flash of experience of love, even now, the soul is there. It is the thought, the mind, thoughts, and the love goes. We still have a function in our pure spirit of intuition. Intuitive knowledge has knowledge of everything. It is the summation of the wisdom of the world. It is the summation of all our wisdom, of all our past lives. When we have an intuitive flash, where does it come from? When we suddenly have a hunch, this is going to happen, where does it come from? Not from nowhere. It is not arbitrary. It is not accidental. It comes from within ourselves, from our souls, and carries with it the wisdom of all our past experiences. That intuitive knowledge does not go with the mind. It is not a mental process. Therefore, it stays when we are pure soul. Joy. Beauty, where do they come from? The soul. They don't come from the mind. So these experiences of love, beauty, joy, intuition, are spiritual experiences of our pure spirit. They cannot be created by the mind. Only their experience can be destroyed by the mind. You have the experience of joy, put your mind at work, it will kill it. You watch something beautiful, aesthetic, absorb the beauty of it, then start analyzing it with your mind, the beauty is gone. You have an intuitive flash which tells you certain and definite knowledge, you start thinking about it, the knowledge is rejected. You have the experience of love, of real oneness where you forget the I, bring the mind, and I comes back, the ego comes back, love is gone. The mind is performing these functions of destroying our own real experiences of the self. Therefore we don't know what the self is. But if we can rise, above the mind into the self, we will still have these beautiful experiences of joy, love, beauty, intuition, and be in ourselves, and create a timeless world among, in which we can be forever, and not be cut down by the Akashic records which will be left below us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.